Rolling toward the sunset of time, I'm traveling the highway home. This world of sin I'm leaving behind, I'm traveling the highway home. I'm traveling the highway home, I'm traveling the highway home. This world of sin I'm leaving behind, I'm traveling the highway home. Though narrow the way, thank God I can say, I'm traveling the highway home. I'm traveling the highway home, I'm traveling the highway home. Though narrow the way, thank God I can say, I'm traveling the highway home. Jesus has set up the markers for me. I'm traveling the highway home. They're all in the Bible, plain as can be. I'm traveling the highway home. I'm traveling the highway home. I'm traveling the highway home. So narrow the way I'm traveling the highway home. Though narrow the way, thank God I can say I'm traveling the highway home. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. And he keeps me singing. I want you to sing with me and sing real loud this morning. Amen. Amen. You're going to heaven. Amen. Yes. I want you to meet me there. Amen. Amen. Amen.
chapter number four mark chapter number four been aiming to do this for a little while uh, 
I talk to a lot of our church members throughout the week and a lot of them that are not able to be with us. Uh, they, they're staying home to be safe and I just want to welcome you by video today. Amen. So glad that uh, folks call me and they tell me, well, we're watching you. We're, even though we're not at church, we're watching and I'm so glad that you're uh, tuning in. So thank you very much for that. And uh, we'd like to welcome everybody. Amen. All right. Mark chapter number four, and I'm uh, going to be uh, reading a familiar story to you. It's going to begin in verse number 35. Verse number 35. <clears throat> and the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, uh, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with them other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him, and say unto him, Master, carest not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to the other, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Let's bow our hearts and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this beautiful story that we've just read of our great and loving, wonderful Savior. Father, this morning I pray that you would help me, Holy Spirit, to lift up the precious name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that if there's anyone in this audience today that has not accepted the Lord and this free salvation, I pray that this would be the day. I pray someone may be watching my video. Lord, if they're not saved, I pray that they would trust you in this hour. And God will give you the glory and praise for these things. I pray that you would encourage our hearts today, Lord. Holy Spirit. Place every word in my mouth today that you once said, and we'll thank you. We'll give you the praise, Father, and we welcome your presence here today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen. Mark 4, 35 says, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. Jesus, in this chapter, he's sitting by the seaside, and he's teaching his disciples, and I like this, he's teaching them the word of God, amen. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things being taught in services today, and I, it's sad that one thing that's lacking today in a lot of churches is the Word of God. Amen? And so Jesus is, uh, he's setting a fine example here of teaching his disciples the Word of God. And he begins with parables about the sower. And then he talks about the parable of the candle and the parable of the mustard seed. And the Bible goes on to say that Jesus spoke in many more parables, obviously, that are not written in our Bibles today. So all that he preached to them that day was in parables. And in those parables, he preached the word unto them. Amen? The definition of a parable is this, if you don't know. It's just a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson as told by Jesus in the Gospels. Amen? So after he was finished, it was in the even, evening time, and he said to his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Let's just all say that together. Ready? Let us all pass over to the other side. Amen? So I hope you'll remember that today, and you probably have figured out right now where I'm going with this message. Well, good for you. Amen? So <clears throat> good for you because I don't. <laughs> Amen. We'll see where we, where we wind up, but I'm sure it's going to be on the other side. Amen. So this morning, that's what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about crossing over to the other side. Now, you may think that, is he talking about death? Is he talking about going to heaven? No, not so much today. I'm talking about real life for real people in a real world. Amen. Dealing with real, true-to-life issues. Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to cross over to the other side. There was a great multitude that was present that day listening to Jesus, and I really like that too. And I've said this before. Anytime you see a multitude following Jesus, there was a reason. That's because he has some good news to talk about. Amen? Amen. Good news is attractive to people. People want to hear good news. People want to come where good news is. I think our world could really stand some good news today. Amen? 
I mean, everything you see in the news is either about the election or about who's got the COVID now. Amen? I'd like to hear some good news about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That will set men free today. <clears throat> so they're, uh, they're listening. This great multitude is with Jesus. And so they, they send the multitude away after Jesus has been preaching. And they set sail to the other shore. Now I want you to keep in mind today that the other shore was the destination all along. Amen? All along. During this whole event that we're going to talk about today, getting to the other shore is the destination. So the Bible mentions also, uh, included with them, there are other little ships that are going to go with them. Amen? And as they're sailing toward the other shore, Jesus goes down below the deck and he begins to go to sleep on a pillow. And I, I think that's something how the Bible even mentions that he slept on a pillow. That's probably the only time you'll find where the Savior even got to sleep on a pillow. Amen? But anyway, as they're sailing to the other shore, Jesus goes down and sleeps on a pillow. And as they make their journey, suddenly there's a great storm of wind that arises. And the waves are beating against the ship. And the Bible said it's beginning to fill the boat with water. So the disciples are like anybody else. Amen. They're human. They're filled with fear. And they, uh, they, they don't know what's going to happen. They, they're afraid they're going to die, obviously. So they go down to Jesus and they ask him, say, don't you even care that we're going to perish? So Jesus, he gets up and he rebukes the wind and he says, peace be still to the sea. And then he turns and looks at his disciples and says, why are you so afraid? Why do you have such little faith? <laughs> what a wonderful Savior that we have today. Amen. What a, what a wonderful, omnipotent Savior uh, who is all power that we have today. What a Savior of comfort. Amen. Aren't you glad that today we have a Savior of comfort? Amen. Amen. What a Savior of assurance. There is nothing for us to fear, ladies and gentlemen, if we are on God's side. Today I want to talk to you about crossing over together, not alone, but with Jesus. Amen? Amen. So let us cross over because, number one, he is with us. The first thing we ought to understand is that no matter what our situation is, no matter what we're faced with in life, that Jesus is with us at all times. Amen? The disciples were feeling good while they were on land. I mean, you know, everybody can stand up today that can stand. And <clears throat> if you're standing, you feel pretty pretty sure about how you're standing firmly on this solid soil. Amen? And it just feels good. To, when your feet say go this way, you just go that way. Or this way, you just go that way. You just feel like you're in total control, don't you? Amen? But things are different on the ocean. Things are different when you're in a boat and you're being pitched back and forth. It's rocky. Things change in the open sea suddenly. That when your sails up, you're, you're driven by the wind. You're, you're not really under your own control. Underneath you, there's, there's nothing there but just water. And water, as you know, is unstable. Amen? It is pitching, it's rolling, it's swelling with great tides. And may I remind you that this is a description of the condition of the sea when it's calm. Amen? <laughs> Just when it's calm. But then whenever the wind picks up and the waves begin to swell to abnormal heights, the wind pitches to the boat off course back and forth. And as the boat may turn sideways, waves begin to splash up inside the boat. <clears throat> Several years ago, my, when my parents were living... We, uh, we took a trip out to California at Christmas time to visit my brother. And uh, he's always been fascinated with the water and sailing. So he, he bought him a sailboat, got his captain's license, and he became a sailor. And he had this boat, this sailboat, out in San Francisco Bay. And so it was a big thrill to him for my father and I to go stay all night on the boat with him. Amen? And you got to remember, it's December, and it is cold out there. And uh, we got out there in that boat, and I, I just shiver all the time anyway. And I was really cold. But anyway, we slept on that boat that, that night. And then we woke up around 6 a.m., and we set sail out of San Francisco Bay, sailed underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, and out there we go. And, and uh, you know, I, uh, then we started having company around us. There were other sailboats around us. And I just happened to turn, and when I looked that way, a sailboat went like this on a 90-degree angle. And those folks were hanging on like this and right they could kiss the water and uh, I'm thinking boy if they go in the drink they ain't coming out because you, you'll die of hyperthermia in just a few minutes in San Francisco Bay 
And so uh, they were fortunate that a gust of wind come and caught that sail and set them straight up. Amen. I began to have a whole new respect for the San Francisco Bay. Let me tell you, it was cold out there. Amen. And if you fall in the water, you're going to die. <clears throat> A funnier story goes back in the 1970s to me. My brother and I, you know, he's always getting me in trouble, it seems, isn't he? Uh, <clears throat> my brother uh, and my dad and myself, we all decided to go fishing. Well, they wanted to go fishing on a Sunday morning out at Geist Reservoir. And so, uh, I, man, I was so steeped in legalism. I was so, oh, man, I, it really took a lot for me to say I'm not coming to church this Sunday. And so I went fishing with my dad and my brother. And, man, all the time I'm out there fishing on Geist Reservoir, I'm, I just feel so guilty. Man, I just feel like God is God's not happy with my decision about this. And I was just feeling so bad about it and everything. And then wouldn't you know it, it began to cloud up, I mean, fast. And suddenly the wind picked up. And if you've ever never been out on Geist Reservoir, when the wind picks up, there's some pretty good white caps out there, amen? And uh, we were just in a, in a little old rowboat type of a thing. And uh, I was starting to get concerned about and I was looking, and boy, I'm telling you, the shore was at a, a distance away, amen? And all the time we are trying to get to the shore, only thing I'm thinking, God is going to get me for this. God's going to let me have it for this. This was such a bad decision. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, uh, I was scared to death. How sad. How sad. Amen. I'm glad that I've learned that God's not waiting for opportunities to get back at anyone. Amen. Yeah. Amen. These disciples, they are concerned for their well-being, no doubt. Now, I tell you what, there's been many of a time that I've been concerned about my spiritual well-being, amen? There, was a, there were just things I wasn't sure about, and I needed some clarification. Eight years ago, I began a crossover. I began a crossover. It was arranged by the Lord, and this was a new journey in my walk as a believer. There's one preacher I like to listen to sometimes, and he calls it the grace walk. And I like that term, and I think it's very fitting and appropriate. I began to learn some things that I'd never heard preached before. It was strange to my flesh. Follow me here. Yeah. This new preaching was strange to my flesh. But my spirit was jumping up and down inside for some of the good things I was starting to hear. Amen. Amen. I had a thirst for, the, for these things, but, uh, and there had been many attempts, you know, to have my spirit quenched by the preaching I was sitting under, but it just wasn't doing the job. But when I began to hear preaching and teaching that all my sin, everybody say all, all, all my sin was completely forgiven without condition, even my past and my present and my future, I began to rejoice. Amen? And when I, when I was learning that I was cleansed forever and that I had never really been out of fellowship with God, that he was not chasing me down with the hounds of heaven to get even with me or settle a score or try to straighten me out, that God was not taking me to the woodshed, when I learned that 1 John 1 9 was not for the believer after sinning, when I heard and finally learned that I had been made the righteousness of God in Jesus, I began to rejoice because the thirst of my soul was truly quenched with that preaching. Amen. Now some of you say that that's soft peddling religion. That's a candy coat. Oh, it's candy coat all right, and it's good. Amen. Amen. We, we talked about that last week. It is good, sweet preaching. It's uh, lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. That's why we're here. That's what the Holy Spirit is wanting us to do today is to lift up that name that's above all names. Amen. When we lift up the name of Jesus, when we lift him up, he will draw all men to, yeah. unto him. Amen. It's not about me or any other preacher getting up here uh, <clears throat> making accusations about your sin and my sin and their sin. When we talk about Jesus, the Holy Spirit of God is going to reveal to us what we need in our life. Amen. 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 The thirst of my soul was truly quenched. But along with the learning of that teaching and now the preaching of that message, the white caps of criticism began to shape up and take form against me. The winds of doubt from others has begun to pitch relationships from side to side. But you want to know something? That doesn't matter because I found that the master was with me. Amen. The master is with me and there is nothing to fear. I've had a crossover experience in my belief system. Amen. And I finally get it that Jesus came to reveal the father unto us 
And in that revelation, we understand that God has done away with the old covenant and has established the new covenant through the only begotten Son of God. I have found myself happily in the ocean of the new covenant of grace. Amen. And let me say this. I'm going to the other side with you. I'm going to the other side with him. Getting to the other side is where he wants me to be, amen? He wants me sailing out of the old covenant of if you will, then I will into the assurance of the new covenant of it is finished, amen? Can I ask you a question today? Who will join me in this journey to the other side? Jesus said, let's go to the other side, amen? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go. Don't be afraid to go because the master is with us. Amen. Amen. He has established the new covenant. He's ordained the new covenant. And he's instructed us to remember the new covenant when we take the Lord's Supper. When we take that bread, remember his body that was sacrificed for us. When we take that cup, remember it was his blood that paid for the price of all sin for us. We remember because the master is with us. Amen. And as we cross over, guess what? There's going to be challenges. Have you read the story? They was in a boat in evening time. What's that tell you? Man, the sun's going down. Amen? It's dark out there. It's dark out there. So let's go back to the boat. They began their journey in the evening time. And Jesus has been preaching all day long. And the human side of Jesus is tired. He gets weary. And he decides to go down below the deck and, and take a rest and go to sleep. And while he's asleep, the Bible says that a great wind arose. Then the boat starts rocking and it's dark out there. There's no street lights. And I doubt that they can even stabilize themselves good enough to hold a lantern. Amen. So can you imagine being out in the ocean and pitch dark in the middle of a big storm? But somebody said, let's go to the other side. Amen? <laughs> Water's filling up the ship and things look bad. And here's an interesting thought for you too. <clears throat> you remember Jonah, don't you? Well, you know Jonah ended up in a storm because of his disobedience. But now look at the disciples. They're in a storm because of their obedience. Amen? I'm reminded that after the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples were filled with much happiness and probably some added courage. Amen. Wouldn't that encourage you? If you, if you had seen Jesus being crucified and then three days later you see him, amen, resurrected from the dead. Man, that would give you all kinds of boldness to go throughout the world and turn the world upside down for him. Amen. You saw the resurrected Jesus. <laughs> but after this great miracle had occurred, the disciples were satisfied with just staying in Jerusalem. I mean, they had been there. They, they, they was obedient to the Lord to stay there until the day of Pentecost. And when that great miracle happened and 3,000 people was added to the church, they were satisfied to just stay there. Man, Jesus has been here. Let's just hang out here with the Lord. Amen? Yeah. But you know what God allowed them to happen? Persecution came their way. Yeah. And you know what the purpose for that was? It was? So that they would disperse out of Jerusalem and carry the gospel with them throughout the world. Amen. Amen. Aren't we glad for that, Gentiles? Amen? Amen. <laughs> Well, glory to God. So, uh, the point is eventually all of the, uh, all of the apostles here, except John, they were martyred uh, even after being obedient to the Lord. Amen? So, what am I saying to you this morning? I believe that we're preaching what God wants, and he may, he may decide that it's time for us to pick up from here and go somewhere else. Who needs to hear the message of the gospel of grace? Amen? Yeah. Amen? So, you know what I'm talking about. We may have to move here pretty soon. Amen? Well, there's no doubt that we will. I don't know what pretty is, if it's pretty or soon. <laughs> well, just that's to be determined. Amen? So, you know what? Storms are a part of our lives. Amen? It makes no difference if we're a born-again believer or not. Everybody experiences the storm of life at one time or another. Well, I tell you this. If I'm going to have a storm, I'm glad to be in the ship with the master. Amen? Amen? The day after Thanksgiving, just this week, another friend who I was acquainted with, who was a wonderful gospel singer and a saint of God, passed away at a young age from COVID-19, day after Thanksgiving. I imagine his wife's not going to celebrate Christmas this year like she has years before. Yesterday morning, I got word that Aaron Wilburn uh, passed away. If you don't know who Aaron Wilburn is, I was honored to be in a lot of services with him back in the 1970s. But Aaron Wilburn, he's a famous Southern Gospel songwriter who wrote the song, What a Beautiful Day for the Lord to Come Again, 
and also just any day now our Lord is coming. Don't get him confused with the Wilburns who were here, not that family, amen? But uh, you see, things happen, don't they? Storms of life happen even to the saints of God, amen? Yeah. Two days ago, a small child, my son informed me, was sitting in his high chair and he fell out of the high chair and had to be taken to the ER. <laughs> just this year, 2020, my, my wife has lost her dad in the month of June from the effects of COVID-19. Her mother passed away six weeks later from the effects of dementia. In between all of that, her dog that she had had for 16 years died. <laughs> I can look around this room today and see some of your faces, and I can remember some of the challenges that you've been through. Amen? Some of us at one time or another have been a caregiver, and nobody really understands what that's about until you're in the middle of that storm. Amen? So I know you see my point this morning. I'm talking about people who are saints of God, real people in real storms. This morning, we sit here in this auditorium one week after the announcement was made that the property has been sold and we're going to have to move. For some of you, I know it creates some anxiety. It brings some fear among you. There's some sentimental feelings here, of course. Amen? Some of our loved ones were saved in this very building right here. Amen? Some of our loved ones got married in this building. Some of our babies and grandbabies were dedicated to the Lord in this building. Many of our loved ones' funerals were here in this building. And now it's hard to believe there's going to be a date set. It's going to be demolished and we won't be here anymore. It'll be a big warehouse sitting here sometime, right? So I know for some of you, it feels like a storm, doesn't it? But if I can encourage you this morning, I want you to remember something. Even though the storms of life are there, even though the storms of life are real, even though the storms of life are scary, even though the storms of life bring great challenges, we are crossing over to the other side because the Master is with us. Amen. We're going to cross over. We're not going to fail. He is not going to fail us. Amen. When he said he would never leave us or forsake us, or he would not forsake us, he was not lying. And I just wonder this morning, how many born again believers this morning, how many people sitting in this room have had at one time or another an angel sent directly from Jesus to come and protect us in a situation we didn't even know that we was in danger of, amen? How many of us today have been in a situation where the Lord said, rescue him now, go to her now, and that angel came and stood between you and the danger, amen? Yeah. We would lose count if we really knew. Amen? And I think one of the joys of heaven is going to be when we get there. If there's ever going to be a big screen in heaven, I don't know. But if there's ever going to be one, it just might be that story. Amen? Look how I watched over you. Look how I protected you. And I think that's going to help the heaven to be heaven for us. Amen? He is the good shepherd. He'll stay with the flock. The good shepherd's going to stay with the flock. Amen? He's the great physician in times of illness. He's the ever-present one in times of loneliness. He's the captain of our salvation, and he will not fail. <laughs> he is our righteousness, and we are overcomers in and through him. So get ready, folks. Strap in. We're going to the other side. Yeah. Amen? We're going to the other side. <laughs> and as we travel, fear not. Fear not. Look at this whole story. Jesus is asleep in the bow of the ship. There's havoc happening just up above him. You think he's not aware of it? <laughs> he knows, amen? amen? The Bible said that the water was filling the ship, and if you go over and read this same story in Luke chapter 8, you'll see there where, where Dr. Luke says that they were in jeopardy. Now, that's kind of scary to me. That's pretty strong language, amen? Well, I'll admit it. <clears throat> there are times... When there are challenges uh, that come about my way, it produces fear. You know why that is? Because we are fearful of the unknown, right? We don't know what's going to happen. The sea's raging. The wind is strong. The boat may even appear weak. The shore looks like it's a long distance away. I don't know about you, but in my humanity, I'm in fear. Amen? But God. <laughs> Amen. Look what happens. The disciples rush down below. And I hope you see the picture here. The disciples. It wasn't just one of them. 
They all went down to, I believe they had a, a church business meeting. Everybody raise your hand if you think we ought to go down and talk to Jesus right now. I think hands are going up everywhere. So they rushed down to see Jesus and they're all standing there with him, watching him sleep. And they said, Master, don't you care that we perish? I think they were all there, amen? They're all scared. They're all concerned. They're all in fear. Well, let me tell you something. Just in a few days from these chapters, we're going to see that Jesus is going to go to Calvary and be crucified. After that crucifixion, he's going to be buried in a tomb. He's going to be there for three days, and then by the power of God, according to the Scriptures, he's going to rise from the dead. Amen! Let me just tell you something. There is no way that a storm is going to take Jesus' life. Amen. Now, I realize that the disciples did not know that then, right? Would you agree with that? But here's the thing. We know it now. Yeah. Amen? We know it now. We know it now. Let us remember that our master, he defeated our number one enemy, which is death. Amen? The storm, listen to this, the storm could not disturb Jesus, but something else did. It was the unbelief of his disciples that's really disturbing him. What do you not trust in Jesus with today? Is there anything there? Jesus understood their circumstances. You know what? And something else about this too. When they said, Master, don't you care that we perish? I got a feeling they're including Jesus in this. Like he's going to perish with them if he doesn't do something about this. Amen. But that's not going to happen. Jesus understood the circumstances. And I'm sure that the humanity part of Jesus would agree that, well, the boat is small, and yes, it is a huge storm, and you guys probably ought to have a right to be frightened. But it's, it, it, it's what the disciples chose to do with the fear that made the difference. Jesus arose, and he, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind stopped, and the Bible says there was a great calm. And then he looks at him, and he says, so why are you afraid? Why did he have to ask that question to them when he said all along, let us go to the other side? Yeah. Now, you know what? I kind of paralleled that phrase, let us go to the other side, with the assurance that we have in the new covenant. Amen? Amen. Jesus was just as sure as his name was Jesus that they're going to the other side. We ought to be just as sure of our salvation today because of the finished work of Jesus that he's done to bring in the new covenant of grace. Amen? Amen. Jesus did not say to them, Let's do the best we can and maybe we'll all drown. Now see, that's a philosophy of the old covenant, do the best you can. <laughs> that's not where we're at, amen? Jesus promised a safe arrival. Now they woke him up and they said, don't you care that we perish? You know, when we think that Jesus doesn't care about us, it kind of shows that we have lost our faith. That we really don't trust him. Amen? It takes great faith to trust Jesus even in the midst of a storm when you're headed to the other side. It may not look like it, but you're going there. But this is the kind of trust that God wants us to have in Christ. Amen? Jesus could say they had no faith because they forgot the big picture. The disciples got on that boat when he said, let's go to the other side. They all got on there, right? They wasn't thinking about a storm coming. They just thought, let's get on the boat with Jesus. He said, let's go. We're going to the other side. Then a storm happens. Then there's doubt. Then there's fear. I don't know if we're going to make it, boys. I don't know if we're going to make it to the other side. Jesus said, we're going. Amen. They lost track. They lost their vision of the big picture. Now, what are we going to do? Amen? Can I ask you a question? Are we going to lose the vision of the big picture? So what is the big picture for Graceway? Amen? Uh, there might be things that we won't be able to do like we've always done when we move. Amen? It might take a while to reorganize. But you know what the big picture is? The big picture is preaching and teaching the gospel of grace to lost souls and seeing people come to Jesus Christ, seeing Christians coming out of bondage of legalism into the freedom of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the mission. That's the big picture. Amen? Amen. So I hope that we'll keep our eyes focused on what the big picture really is. Amen? <laughs> we need to realize that Jesus is our Messiah. He's the Savior of our eternal soul. He's the rock of our salvation. He's our everything. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it's just unreasonable to be in fear. Fear not, my friend, we're crossing over. And let me just say this, fear is not your friend. <laughs> yeah. Amen? So 
Here's the good news of the whole story about crossing over. If you look in your Bibles in Matthew chapter number 5 and verse 1, the Bible says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea. They made it! <laughs> Amen. Amen! They got over to the other side. And you want to know why? Because the wind and the sea obey him. Amen? We're, we may be in a storm. We may be approaching a storm. You might be in a storm in your personal life right now. I don't know what it could be. It could be spiritual. It could be personal. It could be emotional. It could be financial. It could be physically. Whatever the storm may be in your life right now, I want you to know something. We have a master today that the wind and the sea of life obey. Yeah. When he says, peace be still. And he rebukes the wind. Amen. Amen. When they land on the other side, there's a whole new story that begins to take place. But I hope what you'll see most of all is that they made it to the other side. After the windstorm, after the filling of the boat with water, after the fear of, of certain death, after the rising of Jesus and his rebuking of the wind, they made it to the other side. You know, as a pastor, I get privy of a lot of the battles that you face because you share those with me, and I've even shared with some of you some of my personal battles. <laughs> when we talk about those battles, we talk about the fears that we've had during some of those times, right? But let me ask you a question. Have you noticed, like I have, that some of these battles that we are talking about today, some of those battles are getting to be several years old some of those battles we went through, they're beginning to be dated. They go back a ways. So what am I saying? We made it to the other side, Amen. didn't we? We got to the other side. Even through those crises that we've gone through, even through, through those hard times, we crossed over to the other shore and we made it, and we made it safe and sound. Today, my wife went to work. Today is her Monday. She gets up at 4 a.m. on her to begin her shift, and she arrives at work, has to be there at 6 a.m. So she gets up at 4, she gets ready for work, and she leaves the house at about 5.15 a.m. I give her about 10 minutes on the road, and then I call her. say, how you doing? What's the traffic like? How are the streets? Anybody around you? Do you feel safe? Everything okay? So we'll talk until she gets to work, and she says, well, I made it. I says, well, honey, I'm glad you made it safe and sound. Amen? Yeah. My mom and dad, when they was living, well, you know how we get as we're getting older, right? We begin to worry about our kids. Are they yeah. okay? So I found out that it gave my parents comfort whenever I would call them after I got to the office and I'd say, hey, I made it to work all right. How are you guys doing? Then I would call them at the, at the end of the day and say, hey, I made it home okay. How you got, did you have a good day? Amen? And so there's a, there's a certain a sense of... Uh, well, a good feeling of knowing everybody's okay, amen? Safe and sound. Well, they made it safe and sound. Can I remind you this morning that ultimately our ultimate goal of going to the, the other side, we're going to make it safe and sound? Yeah. <laughs> amen. Amen. We're going to make it safe and sound. In between, we're going to face storms and fear may come around us, but I just want you to rest assured we are going to make it safe and sound. We're going to get through the storms of life. If you're worried about Graceway making it, I understand those concerns and some of your fears, but I believe we're going to the other side. And go back to the beginning of the story. Do you remember I made a comment about, a comment about other little boats being with them? You know nothing's really else said about those little boats, but let me just tell you something. Guarantee you that little boats made it too. Yeah. And you want to know why they made it? Because I believe in all my heart they was a looking at the old ship of Zion. Yeah. And as long as the old ship of Zion was afloat, they're going to be afloat. Amen? Amen. And when he made it to the other side, they made it to the other side too. Amen? Glory to God. We serve a wonderful Savior. Amen? The old ship of Zion is not going down. Come on up, Brother Ray and Miss Reba. Let's sing that song again we sing this morning. God bless you. I appreciate you being here today. I appreciate you watching my video. And today, if you're not a born-again Christian, I'd like for you to be saved. I'd like for you to know that you know that you know that you're going to make it to the other side. And the other side is heaven. That's where you want to be. And if you're not saved today, you can't go there. you got to be saved. you got to come by Jesus today. It's Jesus.
plus nothing. Amen. It's him alone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that we're making it to the other side. That's our ultimate goal, Father, is to be in heaven. And Lord, thank you for the assurance of salvation that you have given to us today that we know that when we have been born again by the grace and mercies of God. Father, today I pray if there's anybody in this audience that's not saved, if somebody's listening by video, they've never trusted Christ, I pray that today would be the day they would bow their heart right now and just say, Dear God, I believe in all my heart that Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe that He died on the cross for my sins. I believe that when He was buried, He rose from the dead by the power of God according to the Scriptures. And I now receive you as my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. Would you do that today? Let's sing this song, Brother Ray. Would you like to stand and sing with us this morning? Let's all let us sing. On the happy golden shore Where the faithful part no more When the storms of life are o'er Meet me there Where the night dissolves away Into pure and perfect day I am going home to stay beautiful song. Amen. It's a song about going to heaven. What a beautiful place. And I haven't even been there, but I'm going. Amen. I hope you have a blessed week. Now